it's finally time to take a closer look at the Alcatel Idol 3. Uh, this is a phone I've been having for a little while and I think I finally had it long enough, been using it long enough to give you my thoughts. So let's go ahead and get right into the review. The Idol 3 is all plastic with a nice faux aluminum band around it. The display thankfully takes up most of the front, just leaving enough room for those front facing speakers, an LED notification light, and of course the display drivers. The buttons are on screen, which I like a lot, better than the hard to see compassive buttons of other phones. Looking at you, Life One X. The back contains minimal text with a nice logo on it. Overall, I think the phone looks premium, but it still feels like a toy. It's just because of the all plastic build, it's very, very lightweight. But overall, still a quite nice look. All the content is coming at you through a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS LCD display with about 401 PPI, and it's pretty sharp. Media looks great, and thankfully YouTube does recognize the resolution correctly, unlike with the Studio 6.0 LTE, and you can stream your fave channels in full 1080p resolution. Another thing to note is I also found it quite easy to see this screen in broad daylight out in a direct sunlight. So that is a pretty nice touch as well. The Auto 3 comes with Android Lollipop version 5.0.2 out of the box. And this is my first experience with the Lollipop. So far, I think the experience is pretty good. Uh, except for the clear apps button is placed dead smack in the middle of where my finger slides to get through the apps. And the Android Lollipop game is almost impossible to play. There is some lag around the OS, but very little due to it being mostly stock. The octa-core CPU and two gigs of RAM keep the phone pretty snappy. I'm currently running the Nova launcher with OmniSwipe, but the stock launcher is actually pretty decent as well. You got some extra features in the settings like double tap to wake, turn on and off the lock screen buttons, and turn on and off the LED notification, although I'm not exactly sure why you would want to do that. You got 16 gigs of built-in storage, so you're pretty much in the clear for installing whatever apps you like. The stock keyboard is good, and it appears to be the Google keyboard according to the settings, but I can't seem to get the swipe to work. Regardless, it is fast enough for my daily use, so I haven't felt the need to swap the keyboard for my usual, which would be uh, the Swift Key keyboard. Another thing I wanna talk about when it comes to the SMS is the emoji icon. I don't know if it's just on the Alcatel phone or maybe it's a lollipop thing, I'm not sure what's going on, but when I was using the phone, I found that one of the two icons I used the most, they changed. So now my screaming face makes me look like I'm delusional, and they have the uh, usual maid thing that my girlfriend sees me all the time with a hand, you know that? And now it looks like a weird banana thing. Uh, yeah, some slight changes to the emoji icons, but kind of frustrating and just a little weird. I tried using the LiPo app to change the LED color. It didn't work. You might need root. The reversible feature on the phone is a feature I didn't know I needed and I thought was pretty gimmicky until I actually put the phone into use and I was using that reversible feature uh, pretty much all the time without thinking about it. It's really, really convenient. The Auto 3 comes with front-facing speakers. It perfectly captures my biggest gripe with this, this product. I'm sorry, available for purchase when? Yes, the most annoying thing about the Zen Phone 2. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear to see who won this comparison. The 2910 milliamp hour non removable battery would get you through the day, but if you're a heavy Netflix or YouTube watcher, keep your charger handy. After running a battery test on this phone and literally killing the battery all the way dead, it was nice to see that I could charge this phone all the way up to 60% in about an hour. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, uh, the battery life is not bad at all. The camera with eight megapixels in the front and 13 megapixels in the rear is decent. But just like other budget phones, I found that it's good in daylight and it struggles in low light. And it also hunts for focus and exposure a lot when you're trying to take a picture as well. Here's a test of the uh, front facing camera of the Alcatel Idol 3. This is in daylight, bunch of wind. So just give you a test of how that is. All right. Yeah, you do have all the settings you need, including a beauty mode for all you catfish people out there. All right, one thing to note here, I'm just gonna say it right now, is if you're looking for any benchmarks for the performance, I ran a lot of them, uh, please do check out the website article, which is in the description below. Yes, there is a written article to, to accompany this video. So check that out for all more details and all that. And with that being said, let's go straight into the conclusion. Alcatel really got it right with this phone. 
This is, I believe, the budget phone to beat this year. Front facing speakers, octa-core processor. This is a solid taste of the high-end phone experience. Yeah, it does fall short in some areas, but it's really not any to, to really speak of. It's not, it's, not, it's no real big setbacks when buying this. So if you're looking for a great phone for less than $300, this is the phone. The Alcatel Idol 3. Thank you for checking out this review. Don't forget to check out the written article, which is down in the description box below. Please don't forget to check me out on all my social networks as well. And I'll see you guys. Bye.